Hello again everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks and we got another boat to share with you. Uh, we did a similar one a little while back. Let's take a quick look. So what we have uh, before me right now is a German Type 212 submarine. This is rendered in 196 scale, makes it about two feet in overall length. This is the, the actual German version, U31. But uh, again, it's a German Type 212 submarine. Some unique things uh, about this boat. You'll notice obviously an exceptionally modern shape to the hull with a fared in sail there. Um, but the, the biggest thing that differentiates this boat from a lot of other RC submarines is the X-tail configuration in the stern and the exceptionally unique propeller uh, in the back with the, uh, the vortex attenuator that you guys will probably see here in a little bit. This particular boat was originally built by none other than David Merriman III, uh, and it is now being completely overhauled, refinished, refurbished, and it is getting ready to be boxed up and sent out to the new owner. But obviously before that happened, uh, we had a chance to get it out to the pool, and we're gonna show you that footage coming up here in a little bit. Uh, but before I treat you to that, we are going to take a closer look at the boat and what drives it. So what you see is all of the main components. Obviously, we've got the hull here, the uh, watertight cylinder. Now, this is the two-inch watertight cylinder that David Merriman put out years ago. Um, this is no longer in production, um, unfortunately. Uh, there's not a lot of manufacturers out there that I'm aware of that are making cylinders this small. Two inches uh, in overall diameter. If we take a look at the back here, we've got um, a single output shaft, obviously. Um, our linkage output shafts. Uh, main drive motor and electronic speed controller. Uh, the two servos. And then tucked in underneath this air pump here is the V-tail mixer. Um, or in this case, the X-tail mixer. And that mixes rudder input and dive plane input to move all of the planes together. I wanna to show you what that looks like here in a little bit. We have our ballast uh, servo there, the ballast tank. Moving forward, we've got our main drive motor. This is an 11, or no, sorry, 7.4 volt lithium polymer battery pack. And then we've got a waterproof on off switch here. Potentially something that the uh, the new owner may want to invest in because there is a lot of room up there is a remote on off switch and that'll just save you having to open up the boat to flick it on and off but certainly this works perfectly fine. Controlling everything is uh, a VEX six channel low frequency radio and uh, just to review the channels here on the right stick uh, left and right is your rudder. Forward and back is your dive planes or your, your pitch input. You've got your ballast input on the left-hand stick here. Uh, I believe dive was to the left and surface was to the right. Um, if not, then obviously it's reversed. And then we've got throttle, uh, forward and reverse. Two extra channels, uh, they're just not being used right now. Um, so it's there for future expansion if the new owner should desire it. Now that we've taken a look uh, at everything that goes into the boat, it's time to put everything into the boat. Uh, really easy access. There's a single stainless steel bolt in the back. Um, we're just going to pop that out, lift up at the stern, push it forward, and it slips right off. Um, we've got our valve in there. So this is... Um, a, a snorkel valve. This is a, a, a semi-aspirated ballast system. So that little float there controls the intake. If the boat is under the surface of the water, the ballast tank will actually draw air from the dry compartments to blow the ballast out. And then once it surfaces, that snorkel valve opens up and allows the air to flow through this tube uh, into the ballast tank directly. 
We're gonna set that aside. And you can see just a really nice clean installation uh, in the back here. We've got linkages for our two um, 45 degree control surfaces in the back. There's not really dedicated rudders and dive planes because all four of these act as rudders or dive planes at the same time, which is super cool. I'm gonna show that to you here in a bit. Uh, to put this in, we're just gonna get our receiver antenna out of the way, get our dog bone set up in there, and then there's a little pin in the bottom of the boat that aligns to a hole in the ballast tank, and it just slips in. That locks that down, and once that's in place, just going to put the Velcro over top. And now everything is uh, is kind of locked in. Just going to snap our linkages into place. Now those are connected. You can see they're all centered because our servos are centered. We're going to take our receiver antenna. And we're just going to carefully, nicely, neatly thread it into the boat. Where and how you do it is not imperative. Just make sure it's not hitting anything that moves and it's not going to get trapped by the upper hull when you go ahead to put that on. So this is all free and clear of wires when we put the upper hull on. Now that we've got that done, we're going to extend our antenna, turn it on, and flick on the power. Let's check the functions of the boat. Um, we're gonna check our rudder. All four control surfaces are moving at the same time. These X-tail rudders are actually 1.4 times as effective as a standard cruciform style stern because all four of them work when you're commanding rudder or pitch inputs, which is super cool. These boats are exceptionally maneuverable, as you'll see in the video that we're gonna show you in a little bit. So again, rudders, you can see both of these uh, are moving in the same direction, left and right. Now to dive, all four move opposite. So now it's pushing down, the stern would come up, and the same thing to command a rise. It's gonna go down like that. So it's mixing all of these inputs to drive these two independent shafts at 45 degrees to one another. We can check our, uh, our throttle out here. Forward and reverse. And then our pump. And that's, you can see that little vent opening up there, and that is left on that uh, left stick, by the way. And the other way, you can hear that pump going off. And if I put my finger over this hole, in theory, you should hear that pump sound change. And that's the intake from the top of the boat. The only thing that you need to really worry about before you put the top on is connecting that uh, intake hose to that uh, nipple there. And now you can just simply slip it on, bolt it down, and you're ready to go to the pond. All right, it's time for the thing that all of you guys are waiting for. Enough of the techno babble. You want to see it in the water. I will make that happen for you right now. Let's talk about how this boat performs in the water. So like I said, 1.4 times as effective as uh, you know a standard cruciform rudder. So you're gonna see exceptional turning uh, ability as well as excellent response to pitch inputs. So um, it is extremely agile. It'll turn about its uh, you know 180 degrees, probably within like a five or six foot diameter circle. And considering this is a two foot long boat, that is actually pretty spectacular. If you're looking for a submarine to operate in a swimming pool, this is something that you would certainly want to hunt for, uh, just because of its size, but primarily because of the maneuverability, thanks to those X tails. Uh, it's also pretty quick. It'll get up and move. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a, a fish darting around underneath the water. And certainly you can see that in the pool right now as we watch the uh, footage. So all in all, just 
a fun boat to drive. It's a nice size. You can tuck it under one arm, bring it to the pond. You don't need a pickup truck to haul it around. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting it out on open water, you know, in ponds and lakes, uh, unless it is calm water that is very clear. But hey, uh, if it's uh, your boat, you can do what you want with it. All that said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, really quick overview of this 196 scale German Type 212 RC submarine uh, repaired, refurbished, and upgraded by your pals at the Nautilus Dry Docks, originally built by none other than David Merriman the third. If you like what you see, please do like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Uh, if you have questions or comments, feel free to post them down below. But if you want a quick answer, hit me up by email, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. With that, we are going to let you go. Again, I'm Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks, and we'll catch you next time.